Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel, So Fast Die Young. So this video is my mock-up and flatlining of my Little Red Riding Hood costume. Um, I've been working on this for a bit now, uh, it's much farther along than <laughs> in what you're going to see here. Um, this was filmed quite a bit ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with how everything is going. I was so happy with the fit of the mock-up. Um, I really didn't have any alterations or issues. I was able to uh, make the corrections that I needed to in the initial uh, pattern drafting. And then uh, just a few simple, like I shifted a couple of seams. I made, uh, I ended up letting out the side seam just a little bit more and uh, I adjusted the shoulder seam a bit, uh, which is funny because normally, Normally in like 90% of clothing, I have to um, take up my shoulder seams a lot. And this one, I actually had to let out the shoulder seam. But most of this was shot in time-lapse. Um, I was kind of playing with the different settings on my camera, but I did at least remember to film some like interjections and whatnot and some, <laughs> some uh, discussions of what I was doing and why as I did it. Um, so I have my pattern now. And I have it labeled. Um, also, as I said before, I work without the seam allowance on it. I've just gone ahead and decided exactly how much I want, where I want to add seam allowance. So <clears throat> for me, I prefer to have extra in the center front at the bottom. Um, this because it's uh, the side front seam. I don't really think that I'm going to be doing much alteration here. So. I can leave that at 5 eighths. I can leave the top at 5 eighths. I don't think I'm going to add anything there. Uh, on the side seam, I've added, um, I want to add one inch when I trace, after I trace this out. Um, and so I've just gone through so that I have a reference of what I want to add and where I want to add it to. So um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this all out on my uh, scrap fabric for the mock-up. And um, trace these pieces, add all of the seam allowance, and then uh, cut it out, so. There are a couple of different ways you can trace out a pattern that doesn't have seam allowance. I have chosen for this project to be more meticulous than I normally would. By tracing along the edge of the pattern, I am marking precise stitching lines. I mark all of the notches to line the pieces up, and then I draw the appropriate seam allowance. In this particular case, I'm going to trace all of my pieces before cutting. The pros of doing it this way include having precision when you're sewing and pinning, um, and also it allows you to conserve fabric. You can play Tetris with your fabric pieces. Always make sure to check your grain line as you go and keep your pieces going on grain. I will often make a second grain line on the back side of a pattern piece to help myself line it up when I'm flipping it over. You can also mark your notches on the back side of your pattern or use a notch or Commercial patterns recommend that you lay out your pattern on folded fabric, but the, I find this to be very wasteful. If you need to cut a piece on the fold, you can either fold your fabric where you need it to be, or you can mark the top and bottom of your fold line and then flip the piece to trace the mirror. I'm working with a very small piece of fabric, so there are a few places where I am squeezing in my seam allowance, but it is in places where I know it really won't make a difference in the end. Often when I cut out patterns, I don't take the time to do all of this, and I just lay out my pieces and eyeball my seam allowance as I go. But that's a skill that came with years of experience, and I wanted to be more precise with this particular costume. Here you can see me playing a bit of Tetris with pattern pieces to see how much or which way is best to conserve the remaining fabric I have. I was really excited because I did manage to fit all of the pieces on this tiny remnant of fabric. The upside is it's also a good color, so in the end I'm going to use it to line my journal. Now I am using a small rotary cutter and my ruler to cut out the pieces, though you do have to be careful to not roll too far. I like using scissors too, this just happens to be the method I chose that day. It was nice and easy to just sort of glide the cutter and ruler along the edges uh, and get it done quickly. The method works best on stiffer fabrics. All right, so here is half of my, whoops, half of my initial mock-up. Um, haven't sewn it together, obviously I've just pinned it at the seams. This is the nice thing about the way that um, 
if you do take the time to trace out and draw all your stitching lines, uh, you can easily line things up and pin. Um, I still am curious because there is this kind of weird fullness right there. That's could be an ease thing, could be mm, on purpose. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, this looks like it's gonna fit pretty nice and easy peasy. So on the final product, I'm going to put piping um, on all these edges. And one of the things that I was worried about was the shaping here, because moving this dart from here where it should be to below the bust point to here means that this is going to be a little bit, might sit a little funny, but because I'm going to put piping in here, we actually can gather this. And then, so it's almost like, it's like, a, it's not like a real gathering, it's more like ease, but then it will, um, uh, kind of help shape it back to my bust up here. And here's a quick video of me just stitching the mock-up together, taking the time to line up all of the notches and seams right, and uh, run it through the machine. Here's a picture of my mock-up. Um, I didn't video myself wearing it, but uh, the top turned out pretty well. In the, in the picture, um, it's very hard to uh, tell exactly what's going on. The fabric's not stiff enough to quite uh, it, it kind of scrunches a little bit, but I was able to tell that it fit me the way I wanted to. It didn't really have much issue. And at this point, uh, I moved on to tracing out the pattern onto Cotil, C-O-U-T-I-L, Cotil. Uh, it's a twill weave fabric, uh, that is very strong, used a lot in corsetry and other, um, heavy duty things, used sparingly because it's kind of pricey, but uh, the rest of mine is going to go into some course of projects that I will hopefully also be filming down the line. We'll see. <laughs> I'm using the same method to trace and cut the pattern out of the cotille. You only need to do this with the under fabric. We will use these pieces to cut out the fashion fabric. All right. Sewing is always better with wine. Always. Okay, so, so I cut that out. I've got all my lovely pieces right here. Cut out of the cotille. Next step that we're gonna do is lay this out on top of the fashion fabric and um, just cut it out. It's very easy. Uh, the cotille has a nice, easy to see grain and we've got stripes. So also nice, easy to see grain. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm going to have to really worry about matching stripes, honestly. I might kind of pay attention in the back um, because I am going to throw piping into the back curved seams. Yeah. I'll kind of take a look at it and see where things fall, but it's not, uh, it's not the end of the world. And uh, moving from, I mean, it would be really hard to match the stripes at the shoulder seams, although one could very, like, try to chevron them. Um, and then, uh, well, I don't have to worry about the front panels because the front panels are going to be out of a different fabric. Flatlining allows you to take the qualities of the cotille and apply them to whatever your fashion fabric is. So say I had found something very beautiful but very flimsy or that didn't have a lot of structure. Um, this dirndl, you know, I want, like I said, I want the bodice to be tight and uh, not tight, but I want it to be well fitted and I want it to be supportive and structured. If you're working with a fashion fabric that has um that isn't as structurally sound or is a little widgy and flimsy or whatever uh, which is a technical term <laughs> if you've never heard of it any fabric silk is widgy velvet is widgy we're gonna be dealing with velvet later um anything that's very flimsy and floaty and just shifts all around Ray rayon can be widgy too depending on what it is if you were to take something that was flimsy and floaty and kind of moved around, you could uh, flatline it to cotille or a heavier, sturdier fabric, and you would imbue it like with the qualities, like you would give it the strength that the cotille has, because um, when you're flatlining, you stitch this to the individual pieces, and then you put everything together. So this is going to take all of the abuse. I've got my two front pieces. 
and these are all going to get cut out of this. Um, these are going to get cut out of, the, out of this lovely fabric. And I need to take a little bit of time to figure out. So I think what I'm planning to do is, um, so this has a repeating pattern, but it does not mirror itself in any way, shape, or form. It all stays the same. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is actually mirroring the pieces this way. Okay. So if you look at this chunk of pattern, and this chunk of pattern, if I take this and rotate it down this way, then we'll get like, these will be facing each other, but they'll be opposite. I don't know. I think it'll give it a nice repeat. Well, <laughs> this is me having forgotten to press play or record on the hyperlapse video of cutting this out. <sighs> yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> I'll just lay this out and just give you a little explanation of a couple of things. Do you remember in my last section when I said I wasn't going to get too anal about matching stripes? Well, guess who ate those words? Um, so, first let's talk about that. Um, this stripe pattern is not symmetrical either. So you've got big stripe, little stripe, space, big stripe, little stripe, big space, okay? There's no little stripe on the other sides of any of these, so it's directional, which I didn't really think about at first when I earlier said that I would not need to pay attention to how I was cutting this necessarily. Um, so I ended up actually paying attention to how I was cutting this. Um, mostly I ended up using my notches, my, my marked notches. So I tried to make sure that this notch is sitting on a particular stripe and that this corresponding, so. So that comes out right in the middle of that brown and this one comes out about right in the middle of this brown. So when I stitch these together, in theory, that spot and that spot should line up and then we actually end up getting a lovely matched uh, bit of a stripe right here. So then also, again, when I was talking about how one probably wouldn't need to spend too much time figuring out how to match these stripes, I realized that the shoulder seams would need to either just horribly not match or chevron. Um, because this is the way that either they would have to line up like this. No, no, they couldn't even line up. They would have to line up so that you would have little stripe to big stripes instead of big stripes to big stripes. Or you would have to take the time to properly, again, lay out and roughly match them so that they do. A lovely chevron. Nice. But you know, it's always one of those things you say, oh, I don't need to do that. And then you start laying things out and you're like, oh yeah, I really truly did need to do that. So sorry, there was no uh, filming of me actually laying this out and cutting it, but you get the gist. So um, the way that I pinned it, I'm actually going to leave it this way uh, while I flatline it. This sort of just keeps everything in place. When I flatline, my personal preference is to uh, go the same direction on both sides. So I stitch this side, I'll stitch this side going this way. Um, you do have to kind of flip things around with your sewing machine and whatnot. That way you're not getting torquing of your, because if you stitch this way and you stitch this way, then you, your fabric would like shift, you know? Whereas if you stitch both these ways, they go like, and then you stitch that. So um, that is how I flatline. You'll hopefully see that in a hyperlapse video of that if I remember to hit record. Um, and hopefully I just recorded all of this too. But yeah, I think um, this fabric does like to fray a bit. So I do think I am going to go ahead and after I uh, straight stitch all of this together, I will probably serge it as well. You could just flatline with the serger, but I prefer to do both. It's a little more secure. So yeah, 
I just had to film one last little thing tonight, and that's because beautiful is that? I mean, seriously, that is just going to be gorgeous. I, yeah, I'm in love. So yeah, like I said, this is the way that the, the pattern lays out. So I mirrored this way, which gave me this lovely flip. And I actually didn't even really notice, whoops, whoops, that I did it, but the, uh, the little poppies kind of in the center ended up at the exact same height, just about. So it has a really nice, like, effect going on. I'm very, very happy with this. This is going to just be a gorgeous, gorgeous center front panel for this piece. So, so excited. Okay. And now the flat lining. Fresh needles are very important, and so is using the right size and type of needle. When you flatline by machine, you're going to use the longest stitch length and there is no need to backstitch. This is like basting. You can see me trying to stitch edges in the same direction as I explained before. Since you aren't stitching precisely on the line, you can flip a piece over and stitch on the other side without an issue. This does get a bit trickier on pieces with more sides. This fabric is nice and stiff and doesn't move much. Some fabrics can be much trickier to flatline. I am stitching to the outside of my actual stitch line. You can do this as close or as far as you want. On the side seams, I'm putting the stitch in the middle of the seam allowance, but often I use just the half width of the um, foot as the guide. The most important part is just making sure your fabric doesn't shift. You don't want the flat lining to be too tight or too loose. In some cases, I even repin my lining and my fashion fabric together draped over a curve to give it ease if needed. And now I'm switching to my serger. I have removed all of the pins and clipped all of my threads. I'm just quickly evening out the edges and sealing them with the serger. And of course, in the end, don't forget to clip off all of your serging tails. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, and uh, leave me a comment or two. You know, I really enjoy hearing from everybody. Uh, I want to know what you're, what you are enjoying about the process that I'm doing, and uh, any thoughts or, you know, interests and things that you might want to see me do. Um, whether it's going further into depth into one of the techniques I'm using, or if there's just something about sewing that you want to know. Uh, <clears throat> I'm hoping to come up with some more videos here soon, and uh, I'll be seeing you around. Bye, YouTube! Oh my god. <clears throat>